Good morning and uh, bonjour et uh, tout le baguette si si senor. Do you guys remember a couple of weeks ago I drew these graphs randomly about decision making? That vlog where, where like it was a Saturday and I just like went on to onto like a weird rabbit hole down a weird rabbit hole about making graphs about decision making and basically my thought my my shower thought was that overthinking is when the um let me put it together overthinking is when the growing opportunity cost of postponing a decision outgrows the diminishing return of any decision forming information and um, I was just reading principles by Ray Dalio um, I've been reading not much lately in the morning usually I journal or I wake up somewhere else so I don't do that at all um, but I just found something in the book and it's pretty much exactly that. It says, prioritize by weighing the value of additional information against the cost of not deciding. And it's literally that. Uh, da, 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 da. You need to constantly evaluate the, the, the marginal, marginal benefit of gathering more information against the marginal cost of waiting to decide. So, yeah. Actually, that's just funny, but um, something that he just talked about, which I think is super valuable, is to make your decisions as expected value calculations. So think of every decision as a bet with a probability and a reward for being right, and a probability and a penalty for being wrong. Um, and it's basically how you make decisions in poker, but that's how you want to make any decisions, because like there there's always a, you you can always be right and wrong on a decision right but you don't want to just make decisions if you are more likely to be right than wrong like you don't want to just make decisions when there's a great 51% or more chance of being right because sometimes the value of being right is so much greater than the cost of being wrong that you don't need to be right more than half the time for it to be worth it for example, that's the reason why they say asking doesn't cost you anything, right? Because if you if you want to get something and you ask someone for it, the cost of doing that is um, marginal. Like it's literally nothing. Like it's just asking that questions. That's the cost of that decision. But the benefit of just asking for it sometimes is massive right like just ask for a job or just ask for a favor if they say no there's no cost if they say yes then you have a massive benefit and so on that like you don't need to have a greater than 50 percent chance of being right or them saying yes or whatever for it to be worth it so that's kind of um, a very valuable way to think about every decision you basically just have to make an educated guess on how likely you're right and how likely you're wrong and then also like and then also make a guess on what's the value of being right compared to the cost of being wrong because most decisions it's not the same um, I think the, the 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 other one example that he brings is um, testing for cancer like you might or might not have cancer, but if you get symptoms of something, the cost of just going to the doctor and checking up on it is pretty marginal. But the value of of it, if it's something that's actually, if you actually have cancer, that's massive, right? Then now you know, and now you can like start any um, preventive measures. So they are the cost of not doing it is so much greater the cost of not doing it is so much greater than the cost of um, 
just trying to prevent it. Yeah, just wanted to share that. So one of my favorite things lately um, after lunch is a power nap. Um, they're amazing, there's just one risk with them. You cannot, and I repeat, you cannot under any circum circum circumstances press the snooze button or sleep another five minutes. Because if you do that, your 15 minute power nap turns now into like a two hour of fucking sleep and then you ruined your day. So that's the risk. You cannot snooze. As the ancient Mayas used to say, if you snooze, you lose. So you can't do that, but you've, if you're able to treat that fine line and you just sleep for 15 minutes and then you get up, which I was able to do for the past month, whenever I did it, I never had one, one bad session, then it's fucking amazing. So I'm gonna do that right now. I already made my coffee, so I'm gonna set my timer and then I'm gonna drink my coffee. Good night. And we are back. I just took a 15 minute nap. Now I'm excited for this coffee. Just as I like it. Yeah, it was amazing. I don't know, somehow like, I feel like those, those short naps facilitate something in me. I always have the most vivid dreams in those 15 minutes. I also only remember my dreams from those naps. I never remember my dreams, so. And let's go back to the website. <laughs> What do people usually, like, what count sounds do they make when they recenter? Oh, they just shut the fuck up. That's the concept of recenter. <laughs> they just shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Finn is recentering. Yeah, I'm so fucking recentering, dude. I have a flower on my belly button. With her foot in here, with the iPhone there. <laughs> and there are actually no drugs at all. Mm. No drug has been involved into this scene. <laughs> she has been involved though. I'm, I'm into making I'm that I'm happen. I'm basically pure cocaine. That's how many more videos I'm gonna make on board. Is that? Yeah, don't do anything boring around her. <laughs> I'm allergic to bored. <laughs> Stop. She's bored. Stop. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> She's feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to wake up when there's no alarm to wake you up Sitting, breathing, doing all the things I hate a lot But why now? Holy shit I just wanna make a trip to the child